Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. Want to give a special shout out to Greg R., who is our most recent sponsor. Thank you so much. This rundown is all yours. The Switch is going to be around for a very long time if Nintendo has anything to say about it. Nintendo is planning for their new system to have a much longer lifespan than most consoles. In their latest call with investors, Nintendo creative head Shigeru Miyamoto laid out their plans. He says that while most consoles typically have a five or six year lifespan, they want the Switch to be around a lot longer than that, and they're working on different marketing and development strategies to prolong the system's time on store shelves. Miyamoto didn't get specific about how long they plan to keep the Switch around or what their strategies might be, but we can make a few educated guesses. With a 3DS, Nintendo has kept their device around by continuing to support it with big, exclusive games like Metroid Samus Returns and releasing updated versions of the system like the new 3DS XL. They could do the same thing with the Switch when the time comes, so don't be surprised if you see a Switch Pro or Switch XL down the road. It's no surprise that Nintendo wants to keep the Switch around as long as possible. It's already an unprecedented hit because their fastest selling console in history. And if releasing new content is how Nintendo plans to keep the Switch popular, they're doing the same thing with Splatoon 2. Nintendo has announced loads of new content for last year's colorful shooter. Two new amiibo figures based on the popular side characters Pearl and Marina are on the way, although Nintendo hasn't said what content they'll unlock within the game. We do know that they'll be available in a two-pack that hits stores later this year. A new map called Gobi Arena will see players ink each other for dominance inside a massive basketball court. Nintendo says it will be added to the game's map rotation soon. There's also a new gun being added to the game, but it's actually more like two guns. The dual-wielded Dark Tetra Duelies will give players a faster rate of fire and allow them to execute up to four dodge rolls in a row. Like all the DLC for the game, the new map and guns will be free for all players. The Splatoon series has established itself as an important new franchise for Nintendo. Splatoon 2 has sold more than 5 million copies worldwide, so don't be surprised if we see a Splatoon 3 in the not-too-distant future. Over on the big screen, the upcoming animated Mario movie has been a long time coming down the pipe. In the same call with investors, Shigeru Miyamoto revealed new details about the process that went into getting the new Mario movie started. He says that they had been in talks with different movie studios about making a film based on their beloved mascot for many years, and it took this long to happen because Miyamoto and Nintendo wanted to make sure they found collaborators who would be the right fit. They eventually came across despicable Mii studio Illumination Entertainment thanks to the fact that they're working with Illumination's parent company, Universal, on upcoming theme park attractions. Miyamoto says that when they met with the Illumination team and studio CEO Chris Melodondri in particular, they immediately clicked and saw eye to eye about how a big screen Mario adventure could work. The fact that it took them so long to find the right partners goes to show just how cautious Nintendo is with the new movie. They don't want to repeat the mistakes of the infamous 1993 live action Mario movie, which soured them on the idea of film adaptations for decades. I'll kill that plumber! There's no release window yet for the new animated Mario film, but it probably won't arrive for at least another few years. The first Nintendo theme park attractions will open at Universal Studios Japan in 2020. Another big video game franchise is also getting closer to becoming a movie. The big screen adaptation of the Five Nights at Freddy's games has found a very magical director. Producer Jason Blum has announced that the film will be helmed by Chris Columbus, best known for directing the first two Harry Potter movies, and Home Alone. This seems like an appropriate choice. The Five Nights at Freddy's games involve characters struggling to survive a night where sinister theme park mascots try to break in and kill them, which makes it kind of like a more scary version of Home Alone, complete with the dark magic of Harry Potter. This also won't be the first video game movie from Columbus, he recently helmed the Adam Sandler film Pixels. There is one thing that sticks out though, Jason Blum is known for making low-budget horror movies like Paranormal Activity and Get Out, while Chris Columbus has typically made movies that are bigger in scope and budget, so it remains to be seen how big this film will be. Game creator Scott Cawthon is serving as a producer, so it's a safe bet that the movie will at least have the same tone as the games. Disney is buying 20th Century Fox, but that hasn't stopped Fox from planning new X-Men movies. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Fox is developing a new X-Men movie with two very talented veterans of the franchise. Deadpool 1 director Tim Miller is set to helm a new movie being written by Brian Michael Bendis, the award-winning comic author who's penned countless X-Men tales. The new film has the working title 143 and will apparently focus on the popular mutant Kitty Pride, making this her first time headlining one of the films. Ellen Page has played the character in two movies, although it's unclear if she'll be starring in the new movie. 
It's also unclear where this film will fit given the big changes that are coming to the X-Men franchise. Disney is in the process of buying Fox, and when the acquisition is complete, they plan to bring the X-Men characters into the fold of the shared Marvel Cinematic Universe. If Disney and Marvel do the same thing that they did when they got back Spider-Man, they could hit the reset button and start fresh with new actors in all the roles, which puts the future of the current X-Men movies in doubt. Then again, the new project from Miller and Bendis could be released after X-Men joins the MCU, depending on how long it takes, so we'll have to wait and see. Stranger Things fans are going to get a little less out of the next season. TV Line reports that the upcoming third season of the hit horror show will come in at eight episodes long, making a one episode shorter than the second season, but on par with the first. Hopefully the change won't leave fans feeling upside down. Season three is expected to jump ahead a year, which means it will take place in 1985, with the residents of Hawkins, Indiana continuing their fight against the supernatural. Shooting is expected to begin this April, which means the new episodes will likely arrive later this year or early 2019. If you need more 80s nostalgia in your life, get a load of this. A feature-length, big-screen adaptation of the 2015 short film Kung Fury is on the way, and it's found a very surprising lead. I'm not off the case. I quit. Michael Fassbender is set to play the lead role of a bandana-wearing, kung-fu-skilled Miami police detective named Kung Fury, who fights arcade machine robots, dinosaurs, and the most sinister kung-fu master of all time, Adolf Hitler, also known as Kung Fuhrer. In case you can't tell, the point of Kung Fury is to be silly, and the new big-screen version isn't expected to tone things down, so it will be interesting to see how or if Michael Fassbender is able to pull it off. No word yet on a release date. I'm disarming you. That wraps us up for the rundown. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new episode for you. But you know, we've got tons of other content for you to check out. And if you do and you like it, don't forget to hit subscribe, that little bell. And if you're so inclined, that sponsorship button too.